Hey guys, welcome to the Rat Grind channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today is June 19th and welcome, welcome, welcome. If this is your first time coming into this channel, please, please do subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I look forward to seeing your comments. And don't forget to smash the likes, guys. Smash the thumbs up. Please support this channel. So today is June 19th. Like I said, I haven't seen you guys in a couple of days. I took a little bit of a time off to get my head straight, you know, look into the market, see where it's see where it's heading study even more like i you know like i always tell you guys when you're unsure about the markets you know all you have to do is study 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 work on this instead of affecting this right so that's something that i want to you know always remind you guys so today we're going to look at how the markets recovered in the last couple of days but in just in the last couple of hours it's dropped significantly so that's something that we're going to talk about um today so let's get to it guys so first of all, like I said, crypto markets drop, dropped after slowly recovering the last couple of days, including over the weekend, uh, the Father's Day weekend. So um, Bitcoin and Ethereum was rejected by resistance today and it's heading down. So we don't know if it's going to he head down even more um, or we're going to potentially see some recovery when it bounces back. You know, but right now, you know, it's Asian time right now it's asian markets that are flowing right now so we want to see how that all uh plays out um the korean exchange one of the biggest catalysts in just the last couple of hours right now was hacked for about 32 million dollars so we're going to talk about that news um also want to share you with you guys that two of the russian largest banks are going to offer crypto trading in the next couple months so that's very very bearish news despite of the bad um i mean bullish news despite of the bearish news that we just heard of just the last couple of hours and the press foundation the freedom <clears throat> the freedom of press foundation opened up crypto donations and they received five hundred fifty thousand dollars worth in the in the first day alone and pantera capital we've always talked about them um how bullish they are on cryptocurrencies but they all agreed looking at their numbers that bitcoin underperformed as an asset in the last month so we're going to look, look at that news and see where that takes us as well and there's also a bit of news and an article that i was reading earlier today how bitcoin's volatility is at a yearly low as of today i mean it jumped up in the last couple of hours but in the last um overall this day so far up until the last couple of hours it was about 10 million a uh, 10 billion dollars so it's been an all-time yearly low so we're gonna have to see where that takes us all right guys so let's look at the charts first of all so if we look at the charts right now um we'll see that <coughs> we will see that everything was relatively green today guys um but just like I said, in the last couple of hours, it's turned red. Um, and the catalyst for that, like we talked about, was that potential hack. So we're going to talk about that a little bit more. But let's look at the coin market cap um, right now. As you can see, we had been recovering relatively well, right? As you can see these charts right here. It was going up, going up. And then just, just a couple hours ago, it took a nosedive. All the gains that we earned today or literally earlier today this was we were seeing sometimes double digits um or close to double digits um in recovery <clears throat> but <laughs> it lo we lost all of that in the last, last couple of hours um so the market cap as of right now it's 282 billion dollars and 24 hour volume is 14 billion dollars so like i said we've been at about you know, close to $300 billion in market cap over the last 24 hours. And the 24 hour volume was a little bit low. So that's something that, you know, just changed. And Bitcoin dominance, <clears throat> as of right now, has gone over 40%, right? So if we look at all of this, everything is in the red. Um, the only thing that I remember seeing here that was on the green was Hu Huobi. Um, let me see if I can find them right here. We might have actually changed that already. It might have gone down. Oh, right here. So Huobi token is about it's up about twelve percent. That could potentially be because of the fact that because of this hack, a lot of people are moving their cryptocurrencies and trading there. So that's something that we want to be able to look at. So let's look at um, the Bitcoin chart first. 
Well, actually, let's look at Ethereum first, since we already have this up. As you can see, right, I was I've been watching this chart. We drew we drew this channel out in the last video. Um, in this uh, these support lines right here, and this particular resistance line, and it's it's been trading within this channel relatively well. We were about to see that it would break above. <clears throat> I'm looking at the four hour chart right now. It was gonna break above this channel, but as you can see right now it um it broke off and broke down this just happened in the last you know couple hours or so let's look at the day chart guys as you can see in the day chart we're still relatively green right so it's being rejected by the the 13 day exponential moving average line so we want to be able to see this push up and punch through um and potentially make some gains but that's not going to happen because of the fact that as of today we saw that um we saw that dreaded news but we're going to see how the markets react maybe we get some buy offs i mean buy ups when the u.s market opens today i mean 24 hours a day it is open but a lot of traders are currently sleeping right now so we want to be able to see how that um how that affects the market when they do get back into work and get back into buying and seeing the dips that's why i want to be able to share with you this news relatively fast so let's look at some data here let's look at if we look at the the macd right we drew these line right what we were seeing that it was going like this and i drew out this line for you guys saying that this is sort of what we want to see and we did just that so if we did not get that bearish news today that very very bad news um potentially you know we could have been growing e even more but right now we did do a a bearish divergence here a bearish crossover so we want to be able to see how that continues to progress in the next couple of hours i'm gonna you know tomorrow when i record the video we're gonna see where we where this all takes us so we're gonna have to be um very um very, you know, keep a watchful eye on this. Let's look at the RSI levels. So in the in the last couple of days, you know, we all saw that it's been oversold. And this is a good sign for us to be able to buy into it. I mean, RSI levels does not necessarily mean that it will definitely go up, but it's definitely a good sign to see that we are buying it. We are buying these assets at a low price, right? <clears throat> Maybe not the lowest, but a good entry point, and that's where I usually layer my buys in, right? Um, let's let's just go back to the one hour chart. I just want to see where this happens. So, as you can see, you know we were consolidating above the fourteen day, I mean the uh, eight day exponential moving average, and then we went. This just happened, um, yeah, 17, 1700. So that's definitely when it started to sell off. I mean, if you see right here, it was rejected. That sell off was rejected. We were still trading above, but all of a sudden we had this big, big candle, <clears throat> engulfing candle right here, and it went back ever so deeply. Um, if we look at the if we look at the one day chart, like I said, it was being rejected by the 13 day EMA. We want to be able to punch this through and hopefully be able to get above this. Maybe not today, but in the next couple of days and see where, where this all takes us. If we hit that line here and we were able to break through this particular channel, then potentially that's going to be a good sign because last time we had this channel, right? It was a, it was on the, the lower time frame but right now we form the channel when it this looks like to me a bullish um channel right so that's what we want to be able to see if we can a be able to continue this momentum and potentially head back up so we're going to try to see how that transpires so let's look at bitcoin right now again we're looking at the one day chart on bitfinex as you can see on the one day chart it was rejected by it already rised above the eight day exponential moving average but it got rejected because of the sell-off that it had so let's look at the <clears throat> let's look at the macd as you can see on the macd line right now um it's crossovering on a on a you know with a very bullish sentiment so we want to see how this all transpired but this can drop back down if we look at the rsi we're still we're still on the under the oversold levels right so i mean realistically i don't know how else how much more we can drop to this i mean we can sustain the oversold levels as we've seen in this time frame but as you can see this time frame we continue to go back up um if you let me just draw a trend line right here so as you can see 
that was a bullish divergence right there. But here, we're still seeing a bearish divergence here. So we want to be able to see how this all how this all pans out in the next couple of days. I mean, I was really hoping that when I got back to today and reporting this news, I was delivering you guys good news. And that's what that was what I expected until after dinner when I saw the markets just take a nosedive, right? So let's look at the lower candle. You may not see it much here, but let's look at the one hour candle. As you can see, you know, it was it was above, you know, the 55 the 55 candle EMA, the 200 candle EMA, <clears throat> pretty much is doing relatively well. It was consolidating above here, and then we took the nose dive. It did get it get it did get bought up, but still, you know, that is something that we don't want to see, guys. Let's look at the four hour chart here. So it's not significant. It's not a significant drop because of the low liquidity of the market with that particular hack that we're going to talk about. And you know, that could potentially lead the markets to sell off even more because, you know, people will get confused. Not everybody reads the news. Um, some people just um, have stop losses in place, you know, very, very tight because of the fact that, you know, the fact that there, there's a lot of negative sentiment still in the market, you know, bearish sentiment in the market. The bears are still relatively in control and they are shorting the market. So any news, any hopes of the market going down, they're definitely going to pile on those shorts um the, which will give us a lot of selling pressure that will you know unfortunately may push us down you know push the bears down so that's something that we don't want to see happen so that's what that's where the chart is right now we're going to keep seeing this um still like i said we we still have this level support right here it tested that uh, when it went below that and it hasn't really touched this particular resistance line right here so that's that's i mean that support line right here that's that's really really great news we still need to punch through about 6800 um and hopefully above above 7000 once we do that then we can be able to see where that potentially takes us all right so let's get into the news guys So this is the big news. I was reading about this on Bloomberg. I was looking at the news. Um, I, I'm sure this is reported everywhere else now. But I went, when I was looking at this, this is was this was after dinner for me. This was about 6.43 p.m. I wanted to see where the market took us. And as soon as this news came out, of course, FUD, the market dropped, tanked, right? And that's something that I hate seeing because... We're at a stage and a point where every every bad news affects us negatively. You know, EOS had had a, had a lot of those bad news in the last couple of days. Any any of you that has been holding EOS, you know, I'm sorry that you've been going through all those all those um, negative press. But you know, this is even worse. You know, cryptocurrencies fall as Korean exchange say 32 million of coins stolen and this is bitham bitham is a really really big exchange in south korea right it's the second exchange in as many weeks to report a theft you know the other one was coin grail <coughs> coin rail coin rail i think I, I forgot it was it wasn't a really big um exchange in south korea that's why I, I couldn't really remember the name but this one is a really really great i mean a really 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 big um exchange in south korea right um, we, we're, we're, we're living in a very, very sensitive time right now in the crypto space. You know, that's why, you know, like I said, in the beginning of the video, I'm going to be looking for guys and girls, women and men in this particular space who have been able to see some green days, you know, whatever your strategy is, I'd love to be able to bring you in on the show, bring you in on the channel to interview you so that we can show the rest of the people. Personally, I'm still green guys. I mean, I'm sorry if you are in the red, um, but I'm personally in the green. So that's why I'm still, still very, very bullish on this market. Although, you know, I am a human. I do take um, some of these things personally because I, I watch the market. I analyze it. I read a ton of news every single day. This is part of my life. I mean, although I, I work full time, I have other businesses, other ventures that I do. Cryptocurrency is something that I really, really believe in. So for me to see news like this, I'm I'm with you guys that I want. I see, you know, I see the markets tank and it's, it hurts. It hurts. It really, really does. That's why I'm, I want to be able to bring some good success stories into the into this channel so that you can be able to see that 
there are a lot of positivity that is still happening in this particular space. So Bitham, the rank number seven globally by traded volume on CoinMarketCap, said on Wednesday that hackers stole about 35 billion won, right? Or 32 <coughs> million dollars. I mean, in one, that's billion. That's an astronomical number. And that Ripple was among the coins taken. The exchange then halted cryptocurrency deposits and withdrawals, said it will compensate victims and move investors' assets to so-called cold wallets, which, of course, disconnected them from the internet and they would be less vulnerable. But of course, when liquidity gets removed from the market, people start panicking because like, oh my God, I can't access my coins or this might be, you know, this might be a lot of, a lot of, um, you know, problems that is going to happen in this space. They're going to, they're going to want to sell every opportunity or people were going to stop buying. So with a big exchange, the seventh largest crypto exchange, halting exchange, that's really, really big. Let's just look at real quick. Um, how relatively, you know, what's the size so that we can get an idea. So we look at the markets. I'm back to the coin market cap. Let's look at <coughs> Bitham. Oh, maybe they, they're, wow, they're not here anymore. That was fast. Oh, right here. So as you can see, um, they account for <clears throat> about $395 million worth, $395 million worth of transactions. So that's relatively big, guys, in you know, liquidity that just gets cut off and paused, right? So that's not something that we want to be able to see. And of course, at, as the, the jitters happen, and then it dropped, and that's what I showed you guys earlier. Um, Bitcoin, the largest cryptocurrency, dropped as much as 2% and was trading at 65.88 as of 12 p.m. Hong Kong Standard Time, bringing this year's decline to 54%. So we've lost about 54% in the value as of today. So that's really, <clears throat> I mean, you can, you guys can read this a little bit more Um just the last paragraph here. The hacks in South Korea show how ill-prepared a lot of exchanges still are across large markets, right? So this this is another uh, a notch in the belt of the push for decentralized exchanges, right? Binance. I really believe in Binance really, very, very well. They're the biggest um, exchange out there. I use them for my trading. I use them to buy a lot of my altcoins. I do have accounts in other in other exchanges but i primarily use binance to be able to get into a lot of the altcoins right and they are looking into also offering decentralization so that's something that i'm very very much looking forward to because you know when i give you my wallet when i give you my crypto on your on your exchange you know there's uncertainty you know for if you're going to he hold those things so if you have your coins on exchanges I highly suggest if you do not need to trade them, I suggest you withdraw them, put them in your wallet, print them out, put them in cold storage or wherever you keep them safe away from the exchanges. That's what I suggest to you. I do keep some balance on uh, on um, on exchanges so that if I do have see if I do see a buying opportunity, I can be able to capitalize on that buying opportunity. But of course, the vast majority of my holdings are away from the exchanges because stuff like this stuff like this do happen guys so please please be careful and if you're affected by this if you're in south korea and you're watching this this particular video i sincerely apologize hopefully they can get fixed soon but they did say that they will compensate you guys so please i hope that um you're able to um you are you hopefully are made whole after their efforts to compensate you guys. So the next bit of news that i want to be able to share with you guys so that we can move on from this very negative news is uh two of Russia's largest banks will offer crypto trading in the next, you know, couple months. There's the, considering the top six coins, right? Alta Bank, the largest private bank in Russia, and Sberbank is state owned and is responsible for processing government employee paychecks. That is huge, guys. 
<clears throat> they could potentially open up a lot of liquidity in the Russian market. According to reports from Russian news outlet Commerzant, the two banks plan to enter crypto trading by seeking help from Group B, an ab capital investment fund, which will be in charge of providing technical solutions for the project and also aiding in the development is the National Settlement Depository, which is part of the Moscow um, Exchange Group, right? Which will be the portfolio's custodian. Um, <clears throat> the CEO of App Capital, Alexei, said the investment process will see investors purchase a share of the fund as the shares are liquid and a client can send them from fiat currencies at any time so you be, it provides you liquidity so you can be able to pull in and out of the cryptocurrency market as you please through these services that's really really great because you know russia has been very bearish on cryptocurrency in general um although not completely like china where they completely banned it but of course you know they're looking into you know opening it up for their citizens and new i mean if china opens up their trading again that's going to add liquidity in the market and more more volume that comes into the market because we do need more retail investors to be able to invest in this space so that we can be able to see that that growth maybe not the exponential growth like everybody's wanting or expecting that we're going to moon and everybody's going to drive a lambo i don't think that's going to happen anytime soon i think that's not a responsible thing to happen i think a slow steady growth in the in the space is more healthy for all of us in the long run right i know that's not something that you guys want to hear but that's honestly what we do need we don't need to have parabolic rises and then parabolic drops right that's not something that we want to experience again you know this is a very very hard lesson for a lot of us that we're, we're hoping that we would be millionaires by this time right so just keep that in mind. The next bit of news that I was talking to you about was the Freedom of Press Foundation starts accepting crypto. This was reported on Cointelegraph, and they saw $550,000 in donation on the first day. That's really, really great. <coughs> um, and they announced it on their Twitter. We are excited to launch a cryptocurrency donation page for Freedom of Press, where we can now accept Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, and Zcash to support press freedom we all know that the media um all of that is sometimes are you know are bullish or bearish about our space we can all agree that you know they are just reporting whatever is given to them and what they research and stuff like that although some people do have biases but you know journalists and um press are supposed to be the transparent deliverer of information but unfortunately sometimes you know, because of certain factors, that's not always the case. But that's why, um, you know, more freedom of press is always needed so that we can be able to um, allow them to be empowered to deliver quality and truthful news. That does not always happen, but that's what we hope for. So it's good. It's still a good thing that, you know, they were able to get some of this donation and they were that's really really big money if they were able to raise that in the first day alone so read up on this news a little bit more that's really really great the other bit of news that i want to talk to you guys about was you know pantera capital they're very very bullish in our space and for them to say that bitcoin underperformed the last month that's very bearish news you know that's something that we don't want them to hear because you know we all know that pantera capital like i said has always been a supportive they're a big believer in cryptocurrency. Um, you know, they go on interviews. They give us a lot of positive um, news that comes out of those CNBC reports, CNBC interviews and stuff like that. But for them to say that we all know that in May, cryptos and Bitcoin is specifically underperformed. So that's not news to us, but, you know, they're really, really feeling the squeeze, you know. Um they said that Bitcoin faced a reckoning after skyrocketing from less than a thousand bucks early last year, we all know that, to nearly 20,000 by December, right? And now we know what happened. Think about it. If it went <clears throat> from about a thousand bucks, right? And we are where we are today. We never experienced a $20,000 parabolic growth in the end of 2017. Where would you think we will be today? Won't all of us be happy? Think about that, guys. Think about that for a moment. If we just went from a thousand dollars to six thousand dollars where we are today 
we would be in heaven. We would think, wow, this is the best investment in the world. But just because we saw it rise to $20,000, then we say, wow, if it went up to $20,000, why did it drop to $6,000? Many, many factors affect that price. You know, FOMO, FUD, all that stuff affect the price. As we can see, you know, just today, like I told you guys, hack in a cryptocurrency exchange drops the price. Bad news drops the price. Great news increases the price, right? So that is something that's, you know, we need to be able to look out for. But for them to be able to say this, you know, it's really, it's quite unfortunate that it did underperform last last month. But I'm still very bullish on this because of the fact that we what we are seeing is relatively safe and relatively uh, mature, right? Because this is where we should be right now. If we lost all those parabolic run-ups, this is, this is where we would be as of right now. Um, of course, you know, they said that the top contributors to the fund in May, um, the downturn were Dash, Waves, BitShares, Amai's Go. So those were the last, I mean, those were the, the currencies that affected the Pantera Capital's hedge fund most. Although Bitcoin, you know, dropped, but those particular coins are the ones that really affected it the most. So the last bit of news that I want to be able to share with you guys, hopefully this gives you guys some perspective, right? This was reported on Point Telegraph earlier today. Um, they said that an expert says um, <coughs> Bitcoin's volatility is at yearly low, and this could be a signal for the bottom, right? This was said. This was. Um, shared by the president of the blue line features he says a bottom is a process not a price now that bitcoin's price and volatility are back down to earth this bottoming process can begin you know he they say that that bottoming price could be at six thousand dollars where we are at now or it could go down to all the way to 4500 you know we don't know but at least if we know that the volatility is relatively low and the prices are, you know, stagnating at a certain point, then we know that that's where we all agree. Bulls and the bears agree that the market is supposed to be. And once we get an influx of, you know, positive bull money into the space, then that could be a catalyst for us to go back up again. Not parabolically, but slowly, safely, maturely, and responsibly. Um, the broker considered that Bitcoin's six months downtrend will remain intact until it closed above the 11,300 line. So we're still going to, you know, we're not out of the woods until we are able to hit that 11,300 line. And as well as the near-term downtrend holding if the currencies closes above the 8,500 line. So we need to get above the 8,500 line, hold that line and break through all the way to 11,300. Once we do that, 11,300, then we're off of the races, right? That's where we want to be able to see. But right now, that used to be in the last couple of months, that didn't seem that daunting. You know, we were 9,000, we dropped 6,000, we went all the way up, back up to almost 11,000. Now 11,300 is, is a, a quite a ways away for us to be able to get back there. Honestly, if we look at the charts, we're quite a ways un unless we get another parabolic run, which we could, you know, we could have, but... I don't think that's going to happen relatively soon. I know a lot of people are projecting millions of dollars, $50,000. I think if we just get up to $20,000 this year, even $15,000, that's really, really great already. I know some of you that got into the space when it was $20,000. You know, I'm sorry that I'm saying that, but that's reality. You know, we may be able to, you know, we may be able to get to that price eventually, but maybe not this year. We're already almost... We're actually over half of the year already. So that's something that we may or may not see relatively soon. All right. Well, that's all the news that I have for you guys today. I hope that allows you to make great decisions. Look at looking at the market and seeing where you stand as of today. I'm sorry if you lost some opportunities in the last couple of hours because of that hack. Um, I do apologize. I mean, you know, for you experiencing that, but you know, this is part of the space. We all know it. We've seen it. We've seen the ups and downs. It's like a roller coaster ride. We just have to work on our research. We have to work on the, the, the information, the knowledge that we have in our heads so that our hearts can be firm in making, in believing and making the right decisions.
All right. Well, I hope that you found value in that. Please don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, give me a thumbs up and leave me your comments. Let me know your feedback of the video. I really appreciate them. I want to see them continuously so that I can continually improve this particular channel for you guys. All right. Well, until you guys see you guys on the next video, I wish you and your family a success filled day. Thank you. Have a wonderful night. Bye. Love you.